Um, the first question was, some of the teachers said that they're using ArcGIS maps to have students learn about sustainability and climate change. As a student, what do you think your own teachers can improve on after hearing teachers at the conference talk about teaching about climate change as well as other teachers outside of the conference? Of course. So technologies such as ArcGIS are a great way of raising eco-awareness. For one, it makes learning more visual. There are data charts and pictures that and a creative story, storytelling method that makes learning interesting and interactive. Being a visual learner myself, I find that story maps are very interesting and easy to grasp and remember. At school, I would like, like it if teachers have more like hands-on projects, non-site composting, guest speaker series, workshops, environmental clubs, etc. Because participating in these projects helps internalize learning and change behaviors as opposed to just textbook learning. In my own town of Melbourne, the Ed Foundation has introduced an environmental challenge for the STEM month and for the STEM month. And last year, almost 200 students across my town, across, across several grades have participated. It was a great way to get students involved in, at a young age and both understanding the problems and coming up with solutions to deal with climate change. Last year, the topic was reducing household waste and this year it's about reducing greenhouse gas emissions. That sounds really, really cool. Composting in particular, as like one of your examples, I always thought that was really cool, like in elementary school, because then students would like bring their own stuff in. And I thought that was cool. So yes, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, and the next question is, um, a curriculum for teaching climate education in New Jersey schools is available to all schools um, and teachers to use, but do you think it would be help helpful if a universal climate education teaching policy was enforced in all schools? Yes, I believe it would be helpful because unless we do not make it mandatory, any gain we hope to make will take a long time and may not be effective enough to count for anything. As an eco-ambassador with the Earth Institute, I've learned about and worked towards implementation of UN Sustainable, Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, especially SDG 4.7, which states that by 30, 2030, we must ensure that students acquire knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development and learn about sustainable lifestyles, climate change, human rights, gender equity, and promote a culture of peace and global citizenship. In order to achieve this goal, countries need to come together and formulate and implement a universal education policy, which makes climate education mandatory for all schools across the world. Because this is an issue that impacts all of us and we need to cut across boundaries to help fight this existential crisis. That makes sense. Yeah, I agree. It makes sense that there would be a universal thing, especially since like so many things are like universally important to know that, yeah, that makes sense. Um, ben Rich, the environmental teacher in the meeting, said that a challenge in teaching about climate issues has been that the topic is, um, quote, like seen as secondary importance. Are there any ways that you think could um, better get or um, has gotten in your experience students to view climate change issues as a primary importance? So in the first year of signing up as an eco ambassador, I attended a conference where I learned about the real cost of a t-shirt and a pound of steak in terms of environmental impact. And I was shocked. One pound of steak uses the amount of water a person uses to shower over a three year period. Why aren't we taught this in school? For my first eco awareness campaign, I sought to raise awareness and reduce food and plastic waste in my town. To understand the extent of the problem, I reached out to my town's recycling coordinator and I realized that Unless we recycle the right way, most of it counts as contamination and is not recycled. For instance, our town had a contamination rate of 8%, while some towns had a contamination rate of 25%. And countries like China, Vietnam, India, and many others only accept recycled waste with a contamination rate of 0.25%. So why shouldn't we be taught the right way to recycle in schools? Food waste and garbage and garbage is a major source of methane emission, but this can be addressed by composting at home and setting, and setting up town-wide composting facilities. Currently, my town has introduced a pilot, a pilot food waste program with Java composting. My family currently participates in it and we can't get over how much it's reduced our garbage. Um, we have become more mindful about how much food we waste and we feel good whatever 
food waste we generate being composted. Such programs and educational modules can help students see how climate issues are so important and how we can address them. That makes sense. The learning about how to recycle thing makes a lot of sense because I know like most, including like my family, most people I know have like recycling bins and stuff, but like in every recycling bin I've seen, there's always like food or there's like something covered in food. And so that makes sense that like people need to learn how to recycle yeah. better. Um, um, in your experience, how impactful did you find environmental field trips, such as field trips to watersheds, and what other kinds of field trips do you think could be helpful in teaching about climate issues? Well, field trips are very useful. I found, I personally found the trip to my town recycling center very useful. Because of COVID, we didn't really have many field trips organized by the Eco Ambassador Program, but it would be great to organize more field trips that could be local like visiting a native plant garden to understand why attracting pollinators is important. We plan killing of drives around local water bodies and parks. This helps with understanding the magnitude of problems such as littering and using single-use plastics. That's really nice. This is kind of a follow-up question, but um, sure. I know that some, I've seen some schools, like my high school had this, where we like had a garden. And I think that when we could I know that it's definitely not possible everywhere, but like when we could, yeah. we would like eat some of the stuff for lunch or like stuff like that when there was like enough stuff. Um, and then students got to learn about, like they got to use the compost that was created from the school and stuff. Do you think that that would be a good thing to implement in more schools? Yes, definitely. Like you should try to integrate it like into like certain classes, like for example, biology, that should be, that would be a great biology project, especially. And it would also be useful in terms of reducing the school's ecological footprint as well, carbon footprint. So I feel like it should be implemented more. But the thing is, like, when, what might work for one school might not work for another school. And, what, when, when, and then one that would work for one school, it's different, basically. So, yeah, it should be implemented more. But there should also be like certain projects like tailor made to the school like the school should realize what problems it has and what prop and what it can do to change that makes sense that sounds really good um and then there was so this kind of more this might apply more to schools with uniforms but i feel like it could apply to schools without uniforms but one part of the conference was talking about um sustainability and clothing and so how do you think that that could because I before I kind of thought about it as more of like that's a personal thing within your family but do you think it's possible to incorporate more of that and like more action wise um in schools um I'm sorry can you I I'm sorry can you repeat the question I phrased that so awkwardly. I got nervous. I'm sorry. So um, before I kind of, I kind of was previously thinking in my head during that, the like the clothing and sustainability thing might be more like of a personal like or family thing. But do you think there's any ways that um, schools could implement or help students to be more sustainable in like families in their clothing consumption? Um. Yeah, for example, like if a school has if a school has like a uniform, right, it might like deter the need to like buy like more and more clothes. Like you, you just have to like wear the same clothes clothes to school every day. It reduces like pressure to buy to keep buying new to keep buying like clothes. So I think like this a school uniform would like be useful in the in these cases. That makes sense. I've never thought about that way. I've only thought about school uniforms, and yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I know I saw um one school have like because I've heard of like more private schools having um that like I've seen on like BuzzFeed articles and stuff of yeah. um having I guess like trading posts where people would bring their clothes and like get new clothes but then like yeah. obviously there were things about like oh well people can tell what it's like and that creates yes um but I wonder if um but then I heard of a school like a public school doing that was just like regular non-uniform um, clothes and that sounded really cool and I was wondering if like yeah yeah I wonder if like more schools would do that um 
I wish I could answer your question like a little better, but I wasn't there for that session of the conference. I'm sorry. I know. I'm so sorry. Um, I miscalculated how long the questions would take. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, five questions. That's like four minutes each. Um, but yes, I realized that you talk at like a normal speed, not like a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I'm so sorry. I'm trying. Don't worry about it. I am so, do you, um, do you have any like general ideas of, um, cause you're talking about like incorporating into curriculums and like different field trips and stuff. What do you think, like what got you into it the most that you wish that um, you could like say to other students or like the teachers would help other students to get into climate stuff the way that you did? Well, the way I got into it was, be, was I found it online, like on social media. There was a flyer that said like, there was this eco ambassador program was being piloted in our town. And so, and the first meeting was on like July 1st in the library, in our local library. So in summer 19, so I just like, so I just showed, so I just showed up, but I think like, um, like these programs could be like more, could be like more publicized in like schools. Like if you integrate into the curriculum, it, it gets students more interested. And the thing is like to get students more interested in the subject, like you need to like, connected to issues that matter to them. So the sense that you, a kid might not be able to relate to the Pacific garbage triangle, but they could relate, relate to litter in their own town. So, can, so as long as you're like connected to issues that really matter to them, it could get them more interested in, in the subject. That makes sense. That sounds like it kind of ties back into you talking about like the steak thing. Um, because I know that like for me, some concepts were like hard to understand until it was like a solid thing that relates to every day. So that makes a lot of sense. And yes, like the documentaries about factory farming and how yes. like so many people are like, oh, I'm a vegan now because I saw like those documentaries and that was really cool. Yeah. Speaking of factory farming, I actually like did, I actually like created a short video about it, like trying to encourage people to reduce their meat consumption. And during the summer of 2020, create like a small animated video about like the dangers of factory farming, as well as like the, the health costs, as well as the environmental costs of eating meat. I love that. And it was animated. That is so cool. Yeah. Would you like me to send you the video? I would love that. I will be watching that video. I will send it to you once we're done. <laughs> oh, do you think, um, so what do you, what do you think about like school cafeteria food and that like environmental wise speaking of like food in that way yeah so i feel like schools like you like they generate way too much plastic like school cafeterias as well as like as well as like lots of food waste for example um during summer 2019 i created targeted poster campaign against food as well as plastic waste and that was mainly because of my school mainly because i saw like how much waste was being generated in my school cafeteria it's a big pro it's actually like a very big problem. I never thought about that. Like, how do you think that, that could like what kind of solutions do you think that would be suitable for that? Um for example, like I know like I know it might not be like feasible for like certain schools can't afford it, certain schools can't to like give reducible cutlery. But the thing is, like you could like encourage people like to bring their own like to bring their own like forks or something like that, or, or put like a small ta or put like a small like fee on like giving like plastic forks, like maybe like, like three or five cents or something like that, like five cents or something like that. Like using plastic cutlery, you could get like a, like, maybe a small fee or something like that. That might encourage people to bring their own like spoons and forks from home. So that would reduce cutlery waste. Um, and then, and then food, and then food waste, you just have to like, um, you just need like, edu you just need education for that. Like you just need, it just needs to be in integrated into the curriculum and you just need to encourage people not to do it. That makes sense. The color thing is a good idea. And especially for cups, I feel like that could most easily be prevented. Like if everyone gets like a water bottle at the beginning of the year yeah. and like, that's their water bottle, they can decorate it, but yeah. yeah. And it, yeah, there's so many cups. I feel like, yeah. Or like in my school, like they have that thing on top of the water fountain where 
basically you can like, refill your own bottle. You oh. actually have a bet measure where it's like X amount of water bottles saved. Like schools should like put that in there as well. More schools should put that in there as well. Those are the best because I've I always try to fill up my water bottle like the normal water fountain and then it gets yeah. everywhere and I look stupid. It's like so annoying. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The food based thing, I actually don't know anything about this, but for buffets, buffet style, I guess cafeterias, is there a lot of food? There's a lot of is there a lot of food waste generated from that? I don't have the exact, I don't know the exact statistics, I'm sorry, but at least from, at least from my personal experience, yes, I've seen like lots of food waste. That makes sense. I never knew how that worked because, yeah, I don't know how they would know exactly how many people are getting the food. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for meeting with me. Thank you so it was much. so nice to talk to you. It was great to talk to you as well. Uh, take, take care. I hope you have a great week. You too. Have a great week. Thank you.